Okay, guys, the last thing I want to talk about from 3.5 is a hole in the graph, okay? What the heck do I mean by a hole in the graph? Let's consider this function. f of x equals x over x. And you're probably looking at it and you're like, what the heck? Well, remember, the first thing I want to do is I do want to fully simplify this if I can, okay? So I'm going to say, well, this is simply just equal to 1, okay? So I guess these are equivalent, aren't they? Well, they're equivalent everywhere except for at one point. Everywhere except for whatever makes this equal to zero. Okay, so these do sort of cancel out or reduce to one over one is the correct way of saying that. But this occurs at zero. So I have to keep in mind for this function, x cannot be equal to zero. Yet, it simplifies to one. So how the heck do I go about graphing something like that? Here's the idea. X and Y, okay. And we know what the graph of F of X equal to one looks like. It's pretty simple. It's a horizontal line across, right? So we're going, 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 and that's fine. But we have to put an open circle right here and then continue on. Okay. Because, yes, this point is included, 0, 1 is included for this, but these aren't equal at every point. They're not equal when x is equal to, not equal to 0, right? So when I look at this, my domain of f of x equals x over x is actually negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. That's how we deal, that's where sometimes we'll get holes in the graph, okay? So I wanna do an example in the book that includes a hole in the graph. And this is, goes like uh, number 100 problems, 101, 103, 105. We're gonna look at 102 in the book, okay? So let's go over here. And what this is, is they give us a graph and we need to find out the rational function, okay? So maybe what I'll try to do is I'll try to get a little closer. And I will try to uh, go ahead and focus in on that. And let's see what happens. That's better. Okay. So for 102, here's the big things that I would try to notice. Okay. The very first thing that I would notice is I would notice any vertical asymptotes. I see I have x equal to negative 3 as a vertical asymptote. So guess what I'm going to do when I try to figure this out is I'm going to say, well, f of x is equal to something that would have a vertical asymptote. Well, I know for that I would need to have an x plus 3 on the bottom. That's exactly where this comes from, right? Now I want to ask myself, okay, well, let's see. Um, I have a horizontal asymptote up here. I have a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 1. That means the rate that the highest degree on the bottom and the top have to be the same, and the ratio of the coefficients must be 1. Okay? All right, all right. But here's the big thing I want to notice here real quick. Okay? Is that I have a hole at x equal to 2. So what I want to do is, just like we create a hole at x equal to 0 before, that came from having the same thing on top and bottom, I'm going to do here. So I have x minus 2, right? That would correspond to x equal to 2, right? I could see, oh yeah, x can't be positive 2. And that's fine as long as I also put it up top, right? Then I know, oh yeah, hey, if I cancel these two, I have to put a hole when x is equal to 2 for the simplified form, okay? Finally here, uh, I see that I have an x-intercept of negative 1, okay? So I have an x-intercept of negative 1 right here. So how would I have that? How could I get that? Well, I need some value here to make the whole function equal to that value. <clears throat> 